started, but I want to go ever as much as any of you. Uh, Everett? Everett, you, we're supposed to speak at the presentation. Are you, are you coming? What? What are you talking about, man? This morning? Yeah, dude, it's the summit. It's... It's, it's the summit this morning. Yeah, first day of the summit. You know, you've got the, the suit and the cloth, like, meetings in person, face-to-face -face proceedings. Oh, for you real. You've been prepping for this, right? Oh, man. Oh. Come on. Like, okay, all right. What, can't we just do this via video conference or something? Do we need to do, do a conference call? No. Or, no? No, you need to be on stage, actually, right now before the video. Like, ah. Come on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Ah. Anytime. B. Oh, is it going to work from home today? Uh, Who's working yeah, from home today? This is not one of the work from home. Did you look at the calendar? Mm, well, I... No. I don't know. Calendar? Uh, yeah, for Asia, you know. Are you kind of... You're not really ready for this. Uh, sure I am. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, hoodies and flavors? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Isn't totally ready for this. Really cool? Yeah, I think so. All right. Let's get this done. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to give a little talk about hoodies and, and flavors and uh, how to manage diversity. Do you want to uh, come on? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Fine. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Everett Pace. I'm a developer advocate and developer relations lead at Black Hat. And as you can see, I am, in fact, a hoodie plus beard. Uh, my name is Josh Henty. I'm a co-founder and CTO here at uh, Systems Cloud Computing. I am a laser guy. I do not have a beard. You know, despite um, the sort of stereotypes, I actually get a, a, could I get a sense of our, our audience? How many of you are uh, hoodie people? How many of you are bla blazer people? So almost, almost, how many of you would be in the, the other category if there was some other category? T-shirt people. Um, okay, that's, that's interesting, probably relevant. We'll come back to that. Okay, so why is diversity important in our community? What, what does it mean? I mean, it, it, we can all, literally all shapes, sizes, and colors, and variations. What's, what's the point? So there's been a lot of studies done on this sort of thing. And you know, we find that when you have diversity overall, your, overall your companies do better. Um, it actually impacts your bottom line, which is most important to the blazers. But you know, let's, let's be honest with ourselves. It matters to the hoodies too, because we have a living to make as well. Are you going to take one? Exactly, yeah. So I have an extensive hoodie collection and t-shirt collection to go along with it. So the deliberate diversity of the OpenStack community is you know, very much intentional. We, we work hard to recognize those non-technical contributors and, and all that they do for our community, whether it be marketing or product management or testing, which is a, a technical contribution but can sometimes be viewed as not so much. Um, it's important that we maintain kind of a, a cohesion for our community, and especially when it comes to the summit. You know, having the business side, the blazer side, and the hoodie side working together side by side so we don't wind up dissipating and going off in a separate direction. We have a common goal. Now, whether it's, you know, a, a regional diversity or, you know, the role within company or culture or age or gender, it's all good stuff. Uh, well, at least it, it could be all good stuff. It would be really nice if magically we just had a diverse community and it would work and it would click. But the, the reality is if you don't set up the conditions for success, diverti diversity does more harm than good. So a company that is or an organization or a community that successfully integrates diversity does better. But if you just stick a bunch of diverse people into a room and they don't know how to communicate, you, you, you create a security layer. Um, and so uh, it, it turns out, um, I was at NASA way back in the day, and 
uh, while we were working on what became OpenStack, we were also working on what we call group work programming. They do a lot of studies of teams dynamics and procedure, uh, specifically for things like the International Space Station. If you stick a bunch of very diverse people in a small metal tube and you have different genders, different races, different languages, different skill sets, um, uh, different countries, um, and they can't figure out how to get along, somebody will die. And so the, their, their pressure to understand team cohesion drove them to do a lot of really interesting research. Teams, teams can cohesive, cohesify, it's not even a word, it's totally made up word. It is, um, it, it is now, in a, in a couple of different ways, right? So there's what we typically think of as team cohesion is, is social cohesion. It means we like each other. We get along, we drink. And this is really the basis of, of the early sense of community that we had with OpenStack. It was all built around drinking. We're really good at social cohesion. But the other, the other aspect of that. Uh, the other mic, please. The other aspect of that is task cohesion. So bringing a team together focused on a task, and when it comes to development work, this is enormously important. So if you can you know, put all of your wood behind one arrow, get all of your people going in the same direction on your team doing development work, that's absolutely crucial to your success. It's, it's essential and necessary. So you wind up with this, this scrum of developers all moving in the same direction. And when you have that, then you have this forward motion, you get this momentum, and it's incredibly important to the task at hand. And sometimes that task can be incredibly deep and, and require a lot of thinking, and you can't afford the kinds of interruptions that you, know, you might get in a, a typical office space. So what's interesting about that, that NASA data is that these, the, both of these things are helpful. Social cohesion helps, but it's not necessary. Task cohesion is absolutely necessary. And it, you know, there's all of these vague understandings of how it works, but really what it comes down to is an understanding of a common goal and mutual respect that everybody on the team is moving everyone else towards that common goal. It doesn't, you don't have to like them, you don't need to be friends, but you need to believe that everyone is contributing. We're gonna come back to this, this theme a couple of times here. Um, so social cohesion, which we've done historically really, really well, is harder to do the more diverse your community is. It's actually becoming harder and harder for OpenStack to be built around just social cohesion, just us liking to drink together. Sometimes we try, we find out oh, not everybody involved in the community is an alcoholic anymore. This was really easy early on. <laughs> Texans and NASA people are all raging alcoholics, but uh, not so much anymore. And Canadians. And Canadians. And Canadians. Um, but that's not the reason we're highlighting this issue right now. So I want to take a weird little digression here because we're in Asia and talk about the collapse of the Mongol Empire. Um, it did collapse. And it didn't collapse because it was defeated externally. What happened was the Mongol Empire conquered everyone they thought they were going to conquer. They really reached the, the limits of their expansion. And they defeated their common enemy. There's a trick you see in sports teams all the time. When, whenever you're trying to build team cohesion very quickly, the easiest goal, the easiest shared goal to establish is an external common enemy. And, and uh, it will hold a team together as long as the enemy survives. But as soon as you defeat them, as soon as you win, your team will fall apart if the only shared goal you have is defeating that common enemy. And for many intents and for almost all intents and purposes, OpenStack has won. We are now at this moment, we are the most vulnerable we have ever been for losing task cohesion because we no longer have a really simple external common enemy. Uh, we're like, we're not just about killing X. Um, and, and this is what exactly what happened to the Mongols when they had defeated everyone they were going to defeat. They, they split up into several different empires and started fighting each other. They, they turned on each other as, as new enemies and they started building walls back up inside 
the empire between the different groups. So the net of that is that drinking is no longer enough, which is sad because drinking is really near and dear to my heart. Um, and I'm, I'm going to let uh, ever take a little intermission here and, and give you another perspective on, on this whole angle. So from, from drinking to food and, and restaurants, things we all love, right? So there's a common fable in, it's a common fable known throughout the world, but it's particularly relevant in doing agile development. And it's the story of the chicken and the pig. So one day, a chicken and a pig are walking along a path. And the chicken says, hey pig, I was thinking we should open a restaurant together. OK, replies the pig. Maybe. What would we call it? What's the whole idea behind it? Chicken says, how about ham and egg? Perfectly reasonable. Sounds like a good idea. Come on, let's do it. This will be great. We'll make a mint. The pig says, I don't know. I'd be committed, but you'd only be involved. So I think it's, it's clear here that you know, when you take bacon from a pig, the pig does not survive that process. But eggs come freely from a chicken, and the chicken survives happily. In fact, it's just normal. So there's this, this idea of the level of commitment between the parties involved. And this has been the, the thought in agile development, the, the typical thought in agile development, that developers' hoodies are the pigs when it comes to putting out new features, you know, executing on those tasks that the chickens have put before us. The chickens are typically regarded as the managers, the blazers, what have you. But it's the developers who are doing the work, the ones who are assigned with deadlines to hit, to work with other developers who may not necessarily be in our own organization. And they're the ones, they're the ones with their necks on the line. I'm not gonna don't cross, cross the line. this line. Just yeah. don't, don't cross, cross that line. the line. Whatever it is, don't cross that line. Got it. Okay. So, you know, it, it winds up creating a bit of friction between the two. Because while the, the chickens are clucking, when it comes to planning out new tasks, new features, it's the developers who have to get it done. And they say, you know what? That just, I, I can't make that happen in the amount of time you, you've allotted. Stop clucking. You know, I'm the one who gets the final say on what happens with this feature because I'm the one doing the actual work. But I don't know if that really tells the whole story anymore, especially with respect to the OpenStack community. I think it's a lot more involved in that, and we have to think a little bit deeper about how we relate to one another in the OpenStack community. So I think we have a, we have a new idea, which is that in, in OpenStack, everybody's on the dinner plate. Right? We are, we are bacon-wrapped chicken breasts mm -hmm. for dinner. And uh, this is, from a personal perspective, you know, I'm a blazer guy, but I, I started one of the first OpenStack companies, and uh, I would say my bacon, so to speak, my, my chicken meat, is, is definitely on the plate. OpenStack is the future of my company that either we succeed or fail or die as a team. And I think we're seeing this more and more in the ecosystem whether you're a developer or not, folks are all in on this bet. It's not a, oh, this would be cute and wouldn't it be nice if, uh, if this did well. Um, you know, we're, we're in the boat together. Um, so OpenStack is, is now, will be referred to as the bacon wrapped chicken bin. Um, coming back now to this challenge of saying, okay, we've, we've got to get mutual respect. We've highlighted that there are some stereotypes already that are ubiquitous, and we all like to do Agile, and we believe in DevOps, and we're all Scrum-like and move fast and TDD, but this philosophy that then, that, that some of us are the other side of the plate, or the, the you know, squawking and clucking. Um, how are we gonna improve this task cohesion, right? So, this is the most boring slide. I don't even like bullets. I just figured I would need one slide that's all bullets. These are some of the common barriers to group cohesion. Um, and the, 
the summary underneath these is clash of personalities, or it's a conflict on roles, or it's a breakdown of communication, or it's power struggles, uh, disagreement on what the mission is, is the number one problem. And, and there's, there's a solution that addresses all of these problems. So that's kind of what we want to focus on next. So we think the solution is simply understanding each other. And there's no silver bullet to this. There's no bullet points to this. Understanding each other is hard work. It really is. It's understanding others' perspective, opening your ears, opening your mind. Um, I could take it to opening your heart even in some cases, making yourself vulnerable in the community, putting yourself out there. I mean, that's actually what I have personally found doing open source development is putting yourself out and open into the community and making yourself vulnerable. A pull request is a little piece of you. As much as people tell you, you know, you are not your code, when you put it out there and you get those reviews and the minus ones start rolling in, it's, uh, it, it cuts. You know, and it, it takes a while to really understand where the other developers are coming from or possibly, you know, what's motivating them. You know, you always got to kind of look for that motivation behind, oh, you know, they want more performance or, you know, maybe it doesn't quite jive with something they're trying to do uh, for their organization. You know, it could be a, a product manager that's saying, you know what, that conflicts with something that we're trying to do. Um, so it's a matter of understanding each other's perspectives. And I've found that's one of the hardest things to do in development is understanding the perspectives of your users, of the other developers, of the managers, the blazers, that is. And it's a matter of just maybe sometimes taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, looking at the bigger community and thinking, okay, so I do have this one overriding need right now, but is it in service of the wider open community? So it's just bringing yourself into the community and opening yourself up to it. Now, specifically when it comes to wearing the hoodie, and being a developer advocate, I actually kind of wear, do, do a bit of different things. I mean, I, most of my time is actually development focused. Uh, the majority, which means really like 50, 60%. The other part of it is this guy here doing the, the dance up on stage um, at conferences and user groups and wherever else I can reach out to developers and other people. And it's, it can be a very, heads down thing when I'm in development mode. I, I really kind of take things week to week. Um, it, it's, I, I can't even do things kind of day to day. It's a matter of getting my head into a problem uh, about a week at a time, saying, okay, you know what, this week I'm devoting to development because anything less, you wind up not gaining the kind of momentum you need to really knock out a feature, uh, if it, especially if it's a, a bigger feature. And getting the kinds of interruptions that happen in a, a usual office setting. I mean, uh, I personally find even just visual interruptions. Sure, you can throw on uh, a set of headphones and you know, kind of zone out that way, but I, I will literally sometimes sit in front of my screen like this, so I can literally see nothing but code. And doing that, your, your perspective quite literally narrows, right? I'm, I'm looking at this piece of code, I'm, I'm very focused, on these, optimizing these six lines into you know, a good loop that makes sense, that would make sense to other developers as well. So again, going back to zooming out a bit and understanding that in the larger context, that's so crucial, that's so necessary to understand what you're doing in the larger context and remaining open to the possibilities that are endless within the entire OpenStack community. So my name is, uh is Joshua McKenzie and I'm, I'm wearing a blazer. And I, I used to be a developer and I've gone through this transition of like, what is the difference between maker time, where you get to have four hours of time and everything disappears except for the code, and manager time. This is a Paul Graham term, right? Manager time is everything is scheduled and it's scheduled in pieces. 
And your expectation is this meeting is followed by another meeting, which is followed by another meeting, which is followed by another meeting. And I always know what I'm going to do because I'm going to look on my calendar and that's the next thing I'm doing. Um, and that's really powerful if you're driven by a to-do list of things that you know will only take an hour. And you're just doing one after the other after the other. It's, it's very much synchronous. It's face-to-face. -face. It's structured. And it's, it's from the outside in, in the sense of most of my time I spend talking to people using OpenStack or interested in using OpenStack about what do they want to do with it. And they're very far away from the code. In some cases, they don't even know what language it's in. They don't even know the names of the projects. They don't really care. They're interested in, can it accomplish this goal? And, and so this, this tension from the, the outside in view versus the inside out view of like, I know this one line of code incredibly well. I've been working on it for 14 hours. Probably clearly aware of the entire call stack and how this ties into every other piece of OpenStack right now. But if you make me stop thinking about it, I probably don't even know my own name. Um, that, that tension, the, the thing to highlight here is this is not a bad and good side, right? These are two different views of the world. And the combination of those two views of the world is what makes OpenStack a really powerful community. Most open source communities don't let blazers in the room. And this idea is the developers by themselves are going to achieve something amazing. And that's not universally true. It turns out it's very true if the developer is building something that solves the problem that they themselves have. Because whether they realize or not, they're also then the product guy. They're the, they're the, the definition. But it's an, there's an amazing number of people working on OpenStack who don't use OpenStack. It just it wasn't, it's not a tool they were trying to use. They were, it was not a problem they, were, they, they experienced personally. And so having this perspective of, hey, there are people involved as well as the developer, did that whole mesh is pretty important. So we started thinking about, okay, well, what can we do to, to work together on this a little more? So coming together in that, that scrum, all moving forward in one direction, needs to include everyone. The developers and the managers, the hoodies and the blazers. So Joel Spolowski has a great quote here about communication. And it's not about what programming language you're writing in, whether it's Java or Python or C Sharp or Node or what have you, whatever the flavor of the day is, there's always gonna be something new and something great and something shiny for you to get out there. But the question is, can you communicate your ideas? I mean, that's really what we need to do. And it comes from both directions, both hoodies and blazers need to be able to communicate their ide ideas effectively. And sometimes when hoodies are communicating with each other, they can communicate through code. But they need to recognize and, and understand that other perspective from the blazers that, you know what, they don't communicate in code. They can't start the conversation with a pull request. You know, it's face to face or a phone call or email or, or whatever is appropriate, you know. These are the we ways we need to engage with all of the other members of the community in order to keep things open. The, um, the flip side of that from the, from the manager side is, uh, is to trust the developers to be doing the right thing inside the code. Right? And the, the, this has been a common theme in, in product management for years. Tell them what you want, not how to build it. Um, and this idea that the the farther outside, the more of an outside view you have, the less you actually know about the details at the bottom. It's impossible for it to be otherwise. So don't trick yourself into thinking that because you deal with customers, you understand the insides of, of OpenStack, or, or you should. Um, how many of you are familiar with the term bike shedding? Bike shedding? No? Bike, bike shedding, anyone? Okay, so <laughs> long story short, there's a big company building a nuclear reactor. And the engineers have designed the entire nuclear reactor. And very detailed blueprints are going up through the organization for approval processes. It goes up through some, some middle managers. And the middle managers are ashamed to point out they don't really know anything about nuclear engineering anymore. So they fixate on uh, the set of outbuildings around the, the, the nuclear reactor. And they're like, well, you know, maybe we're concerned about some of the safety issues here or some of these details here. We should escalate this. 
so they look like they're collapsing. So that gets escalated, and it goes all the way up to the board. And eventually, the only topic that the board is concerned with is this one particular bike shed. These guys know nothing about construction at all. They don't understand nuclear, they don't understand buildings, but they do understand paint. And they all have an opinion about the color that the bike shed be, should be painted. So what trickles back down through the entire organization is that, yeah, the entire nuclear reactor is fine, but if that bike shed is not pink, you're fired. No, no. If that bike shed is not mauve blue, you're a degenerate. Right. Yes. It, it becomes an... It, it, it. Bike shedding is the worst possible thing you can do as a manager, which is to, in, to focus on a detail that you have no business even pretending to understand. You're like, well, no, obviously, clearly, that API call should be... Uh, you know, that should be the syntax of that REST API. Oh, yeah, you've got it in the wrong order. Shut up. Um, these communication styles, all of these pieces of how we work together are, are challenging and they're interesting. Um, and, and they come out of this, this question of diversity. Um, but there is one more thing, which is uh, we, we've kind of been lying to you. We've, we've framed this in this idea that this is hoodies and blazers. Um, and the reality is that it's just an enormous ecosystem, you know, it's not just product guys and developers. And there's, there's marketers and there's testers and there's folks who write documentation and there's the user committee and there's uh, every possible flavor you can imagine. Business development people. How many of you are, like, partner alliances people? Any of you? Cool. I can bash on them, but no, I'm kidding. They're part of the community, too. And this is what's interesting is there are 3,000, 4,000, something like that people here. Not that many of them are developers anymore. The ecosystem is incredibly diverse because that's what it takes. And so we have to focus on what is that shared goal? What is that unified understanding of our task so that we can maintain cohesion in this community? Because our task is not to go and crush somebody anymore. We already did that. They're all dead. This is the Mongol Empire. Um, so the, the, you know, the, the task that we have to come back to, what, what is that task, Evan? Right. So, like I was talking before about zooming out and, and getting that wider perspective, well, let's zoom out all the way and right back to the OpenStack mission statement to produce the ubiquitous open source cloud computing platform. So, ubiquity means both public, as in Rackspace, or private, as in Fist and Cloud, conquering both areas. We've done a, a great job of conquering the, the private open source area. We're working hard on conquering the public area. And we need to cohese around, is cohese a word? Cohesify. Cohesify around the mission statement again to give us purpose and drive on the task ahead, on the task at hand. And so we can all move in the same direction and continue with this great momentum that we have. So, I mean, we, we can't say it again, and, and we can't say it often enough. Open, open, open. And, and really that is what OpenStack is all about. Those are the principles it was founded on. And we need to constantly remind ourselves of those principles. Because you can see, if you're, you're reading the mailing list and, and watching the, some of the different keynotes and some of the different presentations, uh, the walls are starting to go up in a lot of places. A uh, company, an organization has identified their niche, their market, and they're saying, you know what, we got our piece. You know, now we're going to start putting up the walls. And you know what, this is our piece, this is our niche. And they, they start losing that perspective. So it's really a matter of not only not putting up those walls in the first place, but starting to tear down the existing walls that have already started to go up. Um, this, I mean, I'm just coming back to the, the Mongol Empire as well, right? The, the reality is we are still a whole bunch of smaller communities inside OpenStack. And if we don't have good cohesion, one of the things that helps with, with task cohesion is a sense of identification with the group, right? We need everybody inside OpenStack to think of themselves as OpenStack people, not Nova people, or Cinder people, or business people, or developer people, or members of some core team, or members of the APC, or members of the TC, or members of the board, OpenStack people. And 
that is the moment at which the Mongol Empire ended, was when people didn't think they were members of the Mongol Empire. They thought they were part of the Mughal Empire or of the Black Horde or of this particular group, this family, this lineage, not the whole thing. And we, we have to allow OpenStack to have all of these separate subteams because there's no way to organize it otherwise. This is not, this is way too big to be one project. But it has to be one community. Otherwise, we, we're just, it'll fall apart. So, I mean, the, the, the closing statement for that probably is that this is, this can't ever be us and them. There is no them. There is only us. And that includes, that includes everybody, right? So, the takeaway for you is in every interaction you have this week, every design summit session you sit into, every talk you go to, think about how you can make sure that this is one team. Think about how this can be an us and us working to solve our problems together and not an us and them where I have to win and they have to lose. And then we have time for a bunch of questions if folks are still awake. I've got a question. So when we talk about us, what exactly are we talking about? I mean, are we talking about us, github.com slash OpenStack? No, we're talking about the whole OpenStack ecosystem. All those bits and pieces of software that make OpenStack easy to use, easy to deploy, easy to manage. It's an entire ecosystem that's gonna keep us together and keep us winning and becoming the ubiquitous cloud computing platform. So it's not just about github.com slash OpenStack. There's an entire ecosystem of software out there that all of the companies that are part of OpenStack need to be conscious of and using and contributing to. Are there, are there actually any questions? Because we could ask each other questions for a while. We're pretty funny. I mean, yeah. There's a, there's a really, this is one of those nuanced and complicated and balanced points that I, I, I'm so happy you brought up. Um, we have been arm wrestling this since before we started OpenStack, right? Because we made an initial decision at NASA to use the Apache license. And Rackspace made the same decision independently to use the Apache license. Which meant there is no legal authority to insist that people give back. It's a moral imperative. And it gives us this balance to say, we're actually not hostile to commercial interests. But what we're hostile towards is a lack of participation. That participation can be really complicated, it can be really nuanced. And OpenStack is, to my knowledge, the only open source community that is actively and proactively willing to include folks that mix commercial and proprietary and open source software and hardware. So yeah, we're all part of this community. That moral imperative, the idea being we keep it as open as possible and the community pressure, the peer pressure, is what causes people to contribute, right? Yeah, they're inside and every day they're meeting at the design summit and they're talking to the other people about what they want out of the community and the community's going, well, yeah, but what are you gonna give us back? That's so much more powerful than a legal imperative. The legal imperative, it's just, it's an us and them argument forever. You're stealing from me, right? Whereas the us and us is, how do we feel about treating ourselves as a community? Um, we do have a carrot and stick approach to it, too. We still have the trademark policy and we have some interesting language now around thou shalt use certain pieces of code and thou shalt not use code that isn't somewhere in upstream in certain cases. So there are ways to use the trademark to encourage it fairly aggressively. But the carrot should always be that this is the right thing to do. This is how we think of ourselves. These are our community values, is that we give back. Any other questions? Did, 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 is that totally boring? Are you just not? It's like, that seems dead <laughs> obvious. I mean, come on, we thought you guys were gonna talk about like, you know, where you get your blazers, because that's a great blazer. <laughs> so I'm always happy to talk. This is I heard Hong Kong's a great place to get uh, blazers. Yes, it is. And hoodies, actually. Right, yeah.
So, well, thank you very much for your time, folks. Uh, we'll cut you loose a couple of minutes early so you can drink more coffee. Actually, maybe if you would talk amongst yourselves, I know you're about 50-50 hoodies and blazers. Maybe just pick a hoodie guy or a blazer guy next to you and be like, hey, what do you think we could be doing better in the summit, in every session we're going to have this week? How could we work together as a team so nobody feels like, why are they in my room? We have that on every survey. It's like, why are all those guys in my room? That's, I mean, come on. It's not your room. It's their room, too, right? We're all open to that. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.